Today we're going to get to see something interesting. I had a little idea of mixing purple and black together. And I have a little bit of gold flakes in the black. I added a little bit. Of, I had to do two pours because when I did the first one, when I got it out, it was only about this tall or this high. And there's some wood in here that you can see, walnut. And uh, so I had to re-pour it. And the second pour, I added a little bit of uh, gold to the purple as well. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on turning it where the bowl will sit like this so that it's got this walnut base. And uh, I'm hoping the base will have like a goldish purple to it and a gold black to it. And the top will just be regular purple, but we'll see. Um, last time I did a, a multicolored pour like this, it worked out really well. It was the black and red that I did. Um, this time I'm not sure if they're gonna mesh because some of it uh, looks almost blue, but it still looked good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up I'm going to have to find the center and just kind of turn it in between centers for now to get it rounded out. Uh, get this, remove this end because this is all hollow down in there. So I got to figure out how to do, get all that done before I can even begin to mount it for uh, doing the outside of the bowl, you know, designing wise. Still don't know how I'm going to design it. I, I just, I'm a little bit, uh, we're just going to do it like the black and red one. We're just going to put it on there and just start turning and let the ideas come to me as we uh, see the wood. And I also have some wine corks in here. You can't see them. I hope they stayed where they were supposed to. I didn't glue them or anything. I just, well, I did glue some. I stacked them up four high and stacked them up like in a star shape around the, uh, around the bowl. And I hope it didn't fall over. That was part of the reason I put the walnut in there was to uh, help weigh it down so it doesn't fall over when I pour it. But the walnut will add a nice little touch to it. But anyway, I'm gonna get this mounted up and we're gonna start seeing what looks what it looks like on the inside. Like normal, starts off being real chipping out a lot. So you can see a lot of chip out right there. The initial cuts usually do that for me. I don't know why.
I finally got the bottom made to where I can get the chuck on there. Let's just hope it holds. I was going to use I was going to leave more resin on the bottom but I figured uh, it's probably safer digging down to the wood. I don't know. I could just be thinking of stupid things but so um so what I'm discovering with these wine corks the carbide tip will cut it but it's really rough because it more like grabs it a little bit so I'm gonna try and it scares the hell out of me cutting those wine corks I can feel it jumping a little bit uh, so I'm thinking maybe try to get it hollowed out with my carbide tip and finish it off with the uh, traditional tool it just uh, <laughs> very interesting cutting wine corks put it that way
I'm going to go ahead and sand this down. I had some bubbles in there on the bottom where the walnut was sitting on top of the resin when I when it set. I keep digging and digging try to get them out. As soon as I get one out, another one pops up. So it's probably all the way across. So I can't really, this is probably the best it's looked. I got to figure out a, a better way of doing these because I had the same problem with the uh, red and black. But uh, I'm going to sand it down and I'll bring you guys back when I sand it down. It's going to take a while to sand down. Quite a long time. So uh, grab yourself a drink and uh, get ready for the long wait. I'll be right back. If you were drinking alcohol, I apologize. That took a long time to get this all sanded down. Should have had some water or some coffee. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it sort of two different types of coats on here. I'm going to start out with quite a few coats of shellac to see if I can get this to shine up. Um, and then I'm planning on putting some abrasive paste on it afterwards. My, my own abrasive paste that I got. Um, it might not need it. We'll see. But I generally like how it looks when that abrasive paste is on top of shellac. Especially for my pens. But I'm not sure about resin work like this. But I did, I did notice how... A lot of these corks have some purple or black dots in it. It's kind of neat because you can tell they use the corkscrew to, to pull them out. Because that's how the resin got in there to begin with. Anyway, let's get to finish and see what happens with this piece.
That's about all I'm gonna do there. I'm gonna go uh, use my chisel and get the rest of this little nub off. Sand this up. Um, don't have to do a whole lot of buffing apparently because most of that's wood. So I'll bring it back when I got the bottom done. We are done with it. Every time I touch it, it gets more dirty. So excuse all the dirt. But it turned out pretty good. I'm not 100% okay with the finish. Like you can see, you can see marks in it. You can see it was layered. You can see it was not sprayed. And with resin, you to me, my best, my best luck has always been spraying. But the annoying part is you got those bubbles again, like the last time. But I think it looks good. You can see where people have been. They use corkscrews to get their dang train. bottom you can see where people use their corkscrews to get them out soaked up some of the resin but yeah there we go walnut corkscrew uh, wine corks and purple resin and black resin and I got a little bit of gold I don't know if it'll show up it might show up a little bit of gold in there um, but yeah I'm going to start doing more of these two-tone resin pieces. They look cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out. Glad you made it to the end of the video. And make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.